here in Zurich, Switzerland for the Cybathlon, which is the first ever Bionic Olympics to see the state of the art in assistive technology. The Cybathlon is the first competition of its kind, featuring teams from around the world, showcasing the most advanced technologies for people with disabilities. Can you tell me about your hand? It has five motors, and I control those motors by electro impulses from my muscle. And the wicked one is 360s. That's cool. Where is it going to go from here? I don't know. How good is your imagination? The exoskeleton that we brought today, I can actually take a normal walk now and, you know, step to step, there is no hesitation. It's one, two, three, four. It just gives me the ability to do the simple things in life that you don't really think about. For me, it, it, mean, it means freedom. New developments in scientific research and practical engineering are pushing boundaries, making that freedom possible. It's phenomenal to be in this place and see the way that technology is transforming and changing people's lives. And some of the most advanced developments are actually happening inside the human body. A team from Cleveland, Ohio, is using an implanted device that restores movement to those with severe spinal cord injuries by electrically stimulating their paralyzed muscles. So I have implants in both sides of my belly to which these uh, wires are attached. A little box here tells where my legs are and when to fire which muscles. So below my arms, without the system, the only thing I can do is wiggle my big toe. How did you become paralyzed? Uh, it was a skiing accident on a family trip in Lake Tahoe, California. And we were on, of course, the last run of the day. I had an accident where my skis were caught under a branch and I flew out of the skis and hit a big granite boulder head first and fractured a, a bone in my neck and left me paralyzed immediately. And with the system, Obviously, this is over the top. Now, for the first time since his accident, Mark is competing athletically. Pioneering this technology is Dr. Ronald Triolo, a professor at Case Western Reserve University and the executive director of the VA's Advanced Platform Technology Center. We're at the verge of an era where robotic technology can make a, a real impact in people's lives. Our long-term goal is to make the technology as invisible as possible. That means that we have some sort of man-machine interface that is completely internal and indistinguishable. It's just stretching what it means to be human. This technology has helped you win this race and, and do something really incredible. What can you say about the way technology is sort of integrating itself into our lives right now? What do you think that holds for the future? Getting deep into the human body, getting technology into the human body is one of the last frontiers. And I think that we've tapped into it. There's some great things, not just what you've seen today, but there's some great things being done medically through technology as well. And the technologies on display in Zurich are only the beginning. Researchers around the world have begun experimenting with implanting electronic devices directly into the human brain. In Columbus, Ohio, we met with one of the world's foremost neurosurgeons, Dr. Ali Rizai. 
Now, in the past decade especially, we've learned so much about the human brain, the human nervous system. That's now allow allowing us to use technology to help patients with nervous system disorders. So it's a very active area of technology that's uh, evolving. Today, Dr. Rezai is performing a procedure called deep brain stimulation on a patient suffering from Parkinson's disease. If you had Parkinson's, I've been Parkinson's for about 16 years. And, uh, I've been pretty well housebound right now. Anything to help, I'm help. You know, just gonna, you know, let's do it. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, involves a tiny stimulator that we implant in a part of the brain to shut down the tremor and to reduce the excessive movements that are caused by Parkinson's. Okay, knife back, please. There we go. We made a small opening in the skull, okay? Is he waking up there? Yeah. Very good. So now they're setting up the micro robot there that's gonna deliver the um, electrodes into the brain. We're gonna go about eight centimeters into the brain get to our target area. Tara, you have a very good brain there. Thank you. Nicole, we're going in. So you can see the target there. That's the target of the brain, with a circle and a swirl. As the electrode enters the brain, Dr. Rezai is able to listen to the neural activity in order to locate the area causing the tremors. See the activity here. See, as we enter the Parkinson's area, the background changes, like entering Grand Central Station, a very strong background, a lot of noise. That's the chaos in the brain causing the Parkinson's. So this tells us we're in the good spot. Solid Do you feel any different there, Terry? Yes. Tremor reduction is clear. The left arm, rigidity is going down. Good. Raise up your right hand for us, please. Hold it up. Turn him over, please. No drift. How's that feel to you? He's great. He has over 80% improvement. Yeah. Okay, you're good with this? Yes. Rest. Okay, good. Okay, Terry, we're done. <laughs> The operation's nearly instantaneous 80% improvement displays the power of deep brain stimulation. The procedure can be used for conditions from epilepsy to chronic pain, and scientists are exploring its use to treat severe depression. In Dublin, Ohio, we saw an even more advanced brain implant system. Ian Burkhart, a quadriplegic, is another patient of Dr. Rezai's. After suffering a traumatic injury, he was implanted with one of the most cutting-edge neurotechnologies. Just a few days after finishing my freshman year of college, I went on vacation with some friends and dove into a wave in the ocean. And I didn't know where I was diving was actually only a few feet deep. So I initially hit my head extremely hard and that caused me to break my neck. I lost all function from about my elbows down, and all feeling from the middle of my chest down. I can't move in any of my individual fingers or open and close my hand. So after I had my accident, I was always looking towards what type of technology could help me in my everyday life. And then one thing led to another, and I decided to get brain surgery and be the first person to move my hand with my own brain. Ian is the only human being who's had this technology applied that allows him to move his hands using his thoughts. A small port on Ian's head opens a direct channel between his brain and a computer. The computer interprets Ian's brain signals, his thoughts, and then uh, links those thoughts to an external wearable garment. So basically, it's a sleeve that Ian wears that allows him to move, and this is called brain-computer interface. When Ian thinks about moving, the computer delivers electrical impulses to his high-tech sleeve, allowing him to use his hands in ways that haven't been possible since his accident. All right, I'm starting at three, two, one. Four years 
of not moving a flicker, he started moving a little bit two years ago, and now he's able to perform more sophisticated movements. And right now he's able to do those movements much faster than he did before. Restoring functionality through brain computer interfaces has the potential to dramatically improve the lives of those with disabilities and could even open up entirely new avenues of human experience. Right now, there's a, there's a convergence of uh, so many elements in terms of technological innovation. This is really opening up a whole new window into possibilities. So you're able to record brain activity and link it within milliseconds to result in a purposeful movement. That can be potentially a means by which we can be able to detect other elements beyond movements. For example, sensations. Index, pinky. Right now is a fantastic time for us because we're learning so much more, more than ever before about the human brain one of the final frontiers.